Starting on July 30, fighting erupted in Ain al Helwe, one of the most crowded Palestinian refugee camps in South Lebanon. Since the start of the fighting, at least 28 people have been killed and many others wounded. As soon as the fighting began late July, thousands of families were forced to flee, seeking security elsewhere. However, the fighting continues and more people were forced to flee the refugee camp. Ain al Hilwi is more or less at a standstill. 6,000 Palestinian students who should have joined their schools at the beginning of the new year are unable to do so. Not only because of the insecurity in the refugee camp, but because most of UNRWA run schools in the camp are actually being taken over by the various fighters fighting for the various political groups that are engaged in this in fighting and this war in Ain al Hilwa. 10 million dollars of losses have been recorded in Ain al Hilwa so far. This is a large amount of money, but it is much larger if it's placed within the context of the fact that Ain al Hilwa is one of the poorest. Palestinian population centers anywhere in Lebanon. The classes involve members of the leading PLO movement, Fatah, and a group called the Muslim Youth. Despite repeated talks of a ceasefire, the clashes resumed on Wednesday, September 13. According to Al Jazeera.net, the Fatah movement continues its efforts to military advance, but without being able to achieve a decisive military victory. For its part, the Muslim youth is refusing to hand over those accused of killing Abu Ashraf al Armushi, a general for the Palestinian National Security who was assassinated last July. The Palestinian Joint Action Authority, an umbrella political group that represents various Palestinian groups in Lebanon, have called for ceasefire repeatedly. In fact, they have succeeded in ensuring a relatively successful ceasefire throughout the month of August. Hassan Nasrallah, the head of the Hezbollah resistance groups, has called on everybody involved in this fight not to continue and to reach a ceasefire. He cited that as in the interest of the Palestinian people and the Palestinian cause, the refugees and the people of Lebanon as well. Hamas has just dispatched one of its top members, Musa Abu Marzouk, to work with others in the camp and outside the camp to ensure a ceasefire. Ahmed Azzam, one of the top leaders of Fatah, has also been dispatched to Lebanon uh, in order for him to achieve the same uh, goal. The issue is, however, these various groups are accusing the others of trying to prolong the fight. Uh, whether that is the case or not, the fight has indeed been prolonged. Another accusation is that there are some foreign entities that are invested in this. In order for them to dominate Ain al Hilwe, we are talking about Fatah and the Palestinian Authority in Ramallah. And uh, of course, the accusations continue, and in the process of doing so, the people of Ain al Hilwe continue to die and continue to be displaced. In an article published last August, renowned Palestinian journalist Abdel Bari Atwan uh, wrote that what is happening in Ain al Hilwe could well be an Israeli sponsored attempt to cause inner Palestinian strife by replicating the Janine camp assault scenario in the camps in Lebanon and delegating the task to the Palestinian Authority. In a recent syndicated column that was published in the Palestine Chronicle, Palestinian journalist and editor of the Palestine Chronicle, Ramzi Baroud, wrote that Palestinian refugees in Lebanon remain important for the PA for two main reasons. One, as a source of validation for Fatah, and two, to stave off any criticism or let alone resistance to the Western-backed Palestinian camp in Lebanon and everywhere else. Palestine is not just made of land and territories in which Israel is stealing and robbing on a daily basis. Palestine is also made of people. Wherever there are Palestinians, 
there is a Palestine that is worth talking about and fighting for. Our sisters and brothers in the refugee camps of South Lebanon, as much as the camps of Syria and other parts of the Middle East, are part and parcel. In fact, they are a core of the collective Palestinian struggle for justice and freedom in the Shatat or in the diaspora. Just because the Palestinian Authority told us that those refugees come to be discussed in the final negotiations between Israel and the Palestinian authorities that never even happened in the first place, it doesn't mean that they are marginal. Quite often, we Palestinians end up mixing up our priorities altogether. The priorities for us should always start with the Nakba, the catastrophe that destroyed Palestine in 1948, and the outcome of this catastrophe, which is the millions of Palestinian refugees in Lebanon, Palestine itself, throughout the Middle East, and throughout the world. We have to talk about the Hinal Hilwe, because if we don't, then we are no longer concerned with the struggle of Palestinian refugees. So please, do everything in your power to educate yourself on this issue, to spread the news on this issue, and to engage with other Palestinian communities so that we send a very strong message to all parties involved in this, that the refugees in Lebanon and elsewhere, for us Palestinians, are a red line that cannot be crossed.